them is Volvo's even older 240. Now this can trace its roots back to a time when Harold Wilson was Prime Minister, when England won the World Cup, and when Rod Stewart was going out on his first date. It sells now only because of Volvo's image. It's perceived to be as safe and as sturdy as a Gloucestershire cottage, or a mansion in the case of the estate. Well, 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 it seems to be true. All Cotswolds antique dealers do have Volvos. The thing is, every year Volvo makes some changes to their version of perpetual motion. This year I've got a bigger back window. This policy of evolution rather than revolution has resulted in it becoming quite a good value for money package. It now has power steering and central locking provided as standard, for instance. It also means that when a customer goes into the showroom for a new car, they're not just getting a newer one, they're actually getting a better one. It's not quite as spacious in here as you might imagine. A Montego is just as commodious. And frankly, I find the whole thing a bit on the austere side. Dynamically, the Volvo 240 feels like it's a product of the 60s. With its rough engine and its live rear axle, it's only really happy at very slow speeds. Push it and the whole thing becomes coarse and a trifle wayward. Few, however, will push it. It's rather like a barber jacket, this. Hardly the most fashionable garment you can buy, but Duriger nevertheless for the country set. It's nothing short of mind-blowing that this car was launched to compete with the Austin Cambridge, yet in 1990 it will outsell that technocrat, the Citroen XM. It can do that not only because of its image, but also because it's comparatively cheap.